Good afternoon, Anant. It's great to have you here at ISB campus. Thanks, uh, you've traveled a lot from from far place in New Zealand. That's right. And um, you know we've been doing a lot of initiatives together, the Center for IT and Network Economy, and your center in New Zealand, the Code. And I'd like to talk a little bit about your experience at ISB and working with the centers and some of the initiatives going on. Could you throw a little yeah. bit of light? Uh, as you said, uh, I'm from the Center of Digital Enterprise at the University of Auckland Business School. And uh, about a year ago, I had a conversation with Ravi Bhatna, the executive director of, of this center, mm -hmm. and sort of approached him to talk about potentially doing a research project based in India. Now, uh, at the University of Auckland, uh, what we were interested in was looking at the technology services sector in India and trying to understand a little bit better how it worked, what the business models were. And just talking to Ravi, we got a sense that it might make, uh, the, to do this project well, you have to be situated in India and, and Hyderabad was an attractive place, uh -huh. uh, partly because of the presence of the services sector in Hyderabad and working with an institution like ISB and the Sydney, the center. So all of that made an attractive proposition. So, so we decided to come and do this project. And uh, you know, I've been here for about almost seven months now. We've had a very good experience. Uh, and I must say that the, uh, being in ISB and having the support of Sydney has really been fantastic. That's what I think really helped us a lot with the project in terms of the infrastructure and facilitating the logistics and those sorts of things, mm -hmm. it would have been impossible for us to do it without being part of Sydney in, the, in that partnership uh, sort of role. Yeah. So Anand, uh, I'd like to get a little bit more information on this new project that you're working on, which is around technology-enabled service sector. And you've been interviewing a lot of people and talking to a lot of folks of the, on, in the industry. I'd love to know what some of your findings are and what okay. especially are you focusing on in this okay. research initiative? The, the interest in the project really started uh, about a year ago uh, when uh, an effort led by IBM worldwide wanted to look at the role of services in the economy in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there's a, a sort of widespread understanding now that uh, the study of services is a discipline in its own right. So we got interested in that and we wanted to look at a particular kind of service and service enablement which is based on IT and technology based services. Mm -hmm. So that's how the project got started. So we defined the project in terms of using that what's referred to now as the SSME lens which is service science management and engineering. Okay. Uh, so there, worldwide there are a lot of uh, research being done around this SSME framework, there are a lot of uh, new courses and curricula being mm -hmm. developed. So we sort of position this project as part of that effort starting okay. from the University of Auckland. We also by the way developed and taught a course last year uh, with, and I led and the I'm effort. Uh, that's right. So. Um, when we came here, we uh, said, okay, let's look at the technology-enabled service sector, try and find out essential things. The, the, the key aspect of SSME really is, uh, you know, this idea of co-production of value. So you've got a service being generated in India that's technology-enabled. It's being provided yeah. to a client, typically located internationally. Uh -huh. So unless the, the two parties, the stakeholders work together, right from the time of definition all the way to delivery, and evaluation, you're not going to have a successful mm -hmm. sort of business relationship. So it's the systematic study of the service chain. That's okay. what the focus of the research was. So we took a sort of a multi-methodological approach to do this. Mm -hmm. One was to come and talk to companies and collect some data using a survey methodology. And then to also uh, come along and actually talk in a, in, to get some rich data on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, basis, interviewing CEOs and managing directors of, of some of these companies. The other thing we wanted to do was, uh, if you look at the uh, technology-enabled service sector in India, it's very, very big. Yeah. You've got a handful of very huge, huge players, right. but then you've got another layer underneath of a number of small players, relatively small, because small in India is uh, good means exactly. big in New Zealand. Exactly. But I'm talking about, let's say, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 employee sort of operations mm -hmm. that have defined a very uh, well-defined niches in terms of what type of services and what verticals they'll service. So that's really what we wanted to okay. look at. Because a lot of people have come in and studied the big, big five, five and the big right. six. We wanted to come in and get sort of a better understanding 
uh, looking at a broad cross section of the sector. Okay. So we've we've sort of halfway there with the survey. Mm -hmm. We've done the interviews. Now we've got to go back and analyze the data and see see you know what we are getting. Now one of the things we found that if you look at the uh, service provision in uh, coming out of India, there are two models. One is what we call the captive model. Mm -hmm. where you've got a firm in the US or in Europe or in Australia or in Japan that holds a service provider captive in terms of who they provide services to. And then you've got what are called third party providers that have you know, uh, contractual arrangements with whoever mm -hmm. that can, they can make those arrangements with. Uh, and what we're finding is that the notion of value and definition of value and provision really is not all that different whether you look at captives or third parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, those issues uh, sort of are, are run across yes. the spectrum. Um, now, the other interesting thing we are doing is we are partnering with IBM Research Labs in, in Bangalore. Okay. Uh, and also that was facilitated by ISB right. and by Sydney. Um, and uh, we want to continue the survey because IBM, for obvious reasons, they're interested in this project and what we are doing, given its uh, origins. Mm -hmm. So they would also like to partner with us in the study and see how they can include some of uh, IBM's partners uh, to participate in the data collection effort. So looking forward, that's what we hope will happen sometime mid-year. Okay. And we are hoping that this project will come to some sort of conclusion, at least the immediate project, uh, you know, sometime in 2009. But of course, you know, we want the relationship to be you know, ongoing, whether it's a relationship between Code and Sydney, or whether it's a relationship between Code and IBM, uh, you know, there, there are some larger issues here. So we hope that this is just the first project that is part of something that's yeah. ongoing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we look forward to a much bigger collaboration and yeah. I hope this is just the first step yeah. in developing a deeper partnership between the two centers. Right.